Welcome back to another episode of Week in Review. This week we'll take a look at the Tyrannus system, the 3.3 roadmap, and object container streaming, so with that said, let's get started. So at number 6 we have the roadmap update. This week's roadmap update brings a further 4% progress towards the 3.3 release, which is just 4 weeks away. We sit at a total 67% progress this week, with 3 new tasks being marked as complete. Object container streaming background tasks continue to progress, with the average of the 4 tasks now reaching over 92% completion. The OCS task itself also sees progress, gaining 7% this week and reaching 33% overall. The biggest overall winners are FPS Combat AI's search behaviour at 50%, improvements to delivery missions at 50%, and improvements to mining on planetary bodies at 39%. Our biggest losers are ship and equipment rentals losing 5%, asteroid mining losing 6 and rest ops losing 13 Overall it's been a solid week of progress, and it's encouraging to see object container streaming getting so close for the 3.3 release. At number 5, we have Lore Content. This week offers us another episode of Lawmakers Guides the Galaxy, with the Tyrannus system being the focus of the episode. Tyrannus is currently unclaimed by any faction, with four planets orbiting its main star. It's best known for having tons of asteroids flying around the system, and for the broken moon map found on Arena Commander. It was discovered in 2478 by Mythic Horizon, which was lost shortly after discovering the system to one of the asteroids, and Tyrannus has two asteroid belts which are extremely active, making it a very dangerous place to explore. This has led to a number of outlaws hanging around the system. The broken moon was due to an accident by a shady company performing terraforming experiments on the moon, causing the mantle to break and debris and magma to regularly rain down on the planet. Tyrannus 3 has as a settlement which originally began as a research station, but after a pirate gang contracted many Tavarin mercs to overthrow the system, which ultimately failed, many of the Tavarin settled with the humans on this settlement station. And that's all for lore this week. If you want even more info on Tyrannus, you can check out the episode itself for some deeper dive into the planets. At number 4, we have Around the Verse. This week's ATV gives us another look at the updates in the verse, beginning with the latest changes to player habs. They're currently receiving a lighting pass after being added to several locations in the verse, making their lighting fit better with the locations that they're in. This week also sees the beginning of development for Art Corp's moons, concepting out the styles, colours, etc. to be used. The new delivery lockers have now been complete, with their design changing slightly since we first saw them a couple of weeks ago. We'll be able to use these to pick up and drop off cargo for missions, and they're still being tweaked and tested, but they are coming online for use in 3.3. Hangar props and Lawville signage are being placed into the verse, fleshing out these elements further in both hangars and the transit systems. The hammerhead lighting states are now complete as it moves towards the end of its final art phase. The Banu Defender is entirely white boxed at this stage and is entering the grey box phase of development, with the Banu's design styles being fleshed out. And that's all for ATV this week. Lots of ongoing progress, and 3.3 is shaping up to be quite an exciting release. At number 3, we have Reverse the Verse. RCV this week offers a perspective on everyone's hot topic for this patch, object container streaming. We'll chat to some of the engineers and QA working on this tech due to release for 3.3. OCS has been in progress for 3 years now, but it's a very large and complex task and is only now ready for release. This tech is usually found in single player games, and presents quite a few challenges when implemented in this multiplayer fashion. The tech at its core allows the client and server to load in resources such as planets when a player needs them, and unload the ones that they don't, to prevent huge resource usage, and keep the game running smoothly without loading screens. This causes the challenge of still allowing the player to track things even when they move out of this loaded zone. This release will bring the client side OCS, but the server side isn't planned for a while yet. CIG do stress that this isn't a silver bullet, and in their testing some clients have seen huge improvements where others have seen almost none. Your PC specs will play quite a big role in how much this will affect you. 
Objects attract based on the size they would be if you were to look at them. This means that a planet would stay in memory for quite a while as you move away from it, but an aurora, for example, will be unloaded very quickly. This system also works with the bind culling, which prevents your client from tracking objects that are too far away. This helps reduce the amount of things being processed on the client, reducing overall resource use again. This does cause some issues, however, as trying to call people across the verse won't work, as that player doesn't exist for your client. These are the issues facing CRG at the moment and that they're currently working on. This is being tweaked to allow long-range scanning and radar mechanics to work correctly. One of the big improvements that OCS will bring is moving the object loading from the main thread to a background thread, removing the short 1-2 second freezes that we've seen so far in the verse. This should improve quality of life quite drastically, even if the FPS doesn't skyrocket. This is one of the frequent complaints of people at Olisar, and should make the game feel much smoother. Currently, the unloading of entities from the client when items go out of range works as expected for the Tier 0 implementation, but spawning them back in is still being worked on. It's still using the main thread to load these things, causing the game to be even worse than it was previously, and this is the main focus to get completed before OCS is released. A large part of recent development has been converting everything that exists in the verse to work with the OCS system, which touches everything. This has quite a large dependency graph, and working through everything in the right order has proved very time consuming. The QA team are reporting improvements all around, but we won't know anything for certain until it reaches the PU. This OCS release won't allow for server capacity to increase, as this only affects the client side. We may see an increase with the server-side OCS, but there's no guarantees or timelines as of yet. Another reported upside of the OCS improvements is a quicker load time for the game, as your client no longer needs to load the entire map. The time to get into the game should be drastically quicker overall. The biggest improvements will be to RAM usage, and there will be some smaller improvements to CPU overall. GPU is expected to be unaffected by these changes. And that's all for our TV this week, a good look at OCS, and a good indicator that we should see at least mild performance improvements in the upcoming 3.3 release. At number 2, we have CitizenCon. CitizenCon is now just 31 days away, with the full schedule being released, and only standard tickets being left. If you'd like to attend in person, grab your ticket while you can, and if you'd like me to cover the event live, leave me a comment letting me know. And finally at number 1, we have the Community Overview. As the new release draws near, so does speculation, upset, and general discord among the community. Many are antsy to receive the new updates, curious about what it might bring, or speculative about which features will be dropped. Most are excited to see what CitizenCon will bring, but there are still a good number of people who aren't looking forward to the event. And that's all from me for this week. Like if you liked it, get subscribed, and leave me a comment letting me know what you thought. I'll see you all in next week's episode of Week in Review.